Alright guys, welcome back to another video and in this tutorial what I want to do is I want to talk to you guys about sorting. How to arrange elements in your array from either lowest to highest or highest to lowest and unfortunately in C there's not a built-in function to do that so we need to make our own and there are many different techniques that you can use to sort things. I'm just going to be showing you guys a really um, simple example. It's called a bubble sort. So we're going to be creating a random array or, or excuse me an array of random numbers we'll say like 10 numbers or something and then we'll sort it so the lowest or the smallest numbers are at the top and it goes from small to big or low to high whatever you want to call it so let's go ahead and get started I just put int i temp and swap so basically we're gonna start with three integer variables this i of course is just a counting variable whenever we uh, use our loop this temp Whenever we switch one number with another number, if we just try to switch it all in one shebang, then one of the numbers is going to get overwritten. So that's why we need this temp variable. It's temporarily going to store a number. And the swapped is either going to be 0 or 1. And it just keeps track of when our, basically when we're done sorting our list. You guys are going to see later on. So now, um, just to keep things simple, I'll put how many. I'm going to set this equal to 10, but basically this is the variable to say how many elements are going to be in your array. I'm just going to have 10 numbers in it, so of course 10. And I'll say that um, I'll say that I'm a coach of a hockey team again, since I love hockey, and I'm arranging um, my players' goals from lowest to highest. See who's the best player. So how many? So I have an array named goals, and of course it's going to have 10 different players in it simple enough so far so the first thing I want to do is actually create that array which is going to be just random number so great actually I won't even add comments out comments whenever I post a source code on my forum but for now I'll just uh you know wow do not want to do that my voice can be the comments so for I equals zero and then we'll put I is less than how many and of course I plus plus so this array is going to loop 10 times and for each loop all we're going to do is take that element and fill it with a random number and we already learned how to generate a random number so put rand modulus oh we'll say that this is going to be from like 0 to 20 25 no one's going to score more than 25 goals so do that plus 1 and of course whenever you do this in real life you're gonna have like the data from a database or a separate file or you can even enter it manually but right now what I have is just um, an array of 25 or excuse me 10 different numbers 0 to 25 so next thing I want to do is just make a quick bit of code just to print out the array so print I'll just put original list new line and we can actually use this loop again so of course the print something out print f percent d which is going to be the element that we're on and I messed up my freaking code again ticking me off and goals so right now all we did is we created a random array right there and we just printed it out so in this case this is our original list we have 20 okay we have some players that weren't too good this guy scored five this guy scored two and as you can see this is kinda hard whenever you're trying to look at your best players and your worst because you gotta find them and pick them all out so it would be really handy if we had a, a way to sort this array that was kinda confusing to say from the least goals to the most all right, so let's learn how to do that right now. So the first new technique I want to talk to you guys about is called an infinite loop. And if you just put while inside the condition, put one. Now, whenever you have one right here, one is the same thing as true in programming. So this loop is going to continue forever and ever and ever until you tell it to stop. And the only way that we can tell a loop to stop is to add a break statement. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to say keep sorting this list and sorting it and sorting it and when it's finally sorted we're going to add that break statement and it's going to say okay 
now it's time to quit and I'll show you guys how to add that or where to add that break statement later on so the first thing we need to do is add this swapped variable and set it equal to zero so eventually what you're gonna see is whenever this swapped variable equals zero at the end it pretty much means that this list is sorted now when it's not sorted we're gonna set it equal to one and it pretty much means do the loop again kinda of confusing now but once I write a little bit of code you guys are gonna understand what I mean so the first thing that I need to do is actually copy this for loop and this is gonna be the main sorting algorithm so I wanna indent this alright so what I'm gonna say is for i equals zero and put i is less than how many minus one i plus plus now the reason that we have this for loop inside this main while loop is this what we're gonna do in order to sort this loop is we're gonna take every number and actually I'll run this right now is we're gonna take every number and compare it to the number after it so we're basically gonna say compare 25 to 2 well this isn't in the right order because we want the smaller numbers at the top so switch them so that's what this does it compares every number to the number after it so that's why I added this negative one because the last number this 10 right here it doesn't have anything after to compare it to so we can't just go eyes less than how many so what this negative one does is it stops at the second to last number so every number um, is gonna have something after it so the next thing that we need to do inside this for loop is this so like I said the essence of this program is pretty much gonna take every number and check the number after it and if the number is bigger after it or excuse me if the first number is bigger then it's gonna swap them so I'll show you guys how to do that in code I'm a lot better just uh, writing code than I am uh, talking but we're gonna say if goals I which is the first number it's looking at is greater than goals I plus one which is the number after it then we want to switch them because if this number the first number is bigger we want to switch them because the bigger numbers should be at bottom and of course if you want to sort it from highest to lowest then just switch this around it'll work fine but now we need to switch two numbers and it's not as easy as it sounds what we need to do is we need to, well let me go ahead and type this and then you guys are gonna see goal I and what was that goals or goals all right now set this equal to and those should be square don't know why I put uh, I plus one and just a second I'll explain everything that's going on and plus one is equal to temp and set swapped equal to one alright so I apologize for keeping you guys in anticipation but this bit right here all of this code is responsible for swapping one number with another number now the reason that we just can't go ahead and set the second number equal to the position of the first one is because whenever we do that the first number is lost it gets overridden so what we need to do is we need to take that first number and store it in some temporary variable temporary in you know cyberspace so then we can take that second number in the list and replace it with the first one and then this original one which was the first one put it in the second spot and whenever we do that we say okay we swapped a number right here swapped is equal to one now the reason that we have this line of code is whenever we say we did swap a number it must mean that the list is not in order yet so it needs to do it again so you see how your for loop is right here right outside this for loop we need to add one more condition and that's if swapped is equal to zero then that's when we need to add that break statement so this is pretty much um complete the only other thing that we need to do or we don't even need to do this but we probably should is look at the sorted list 
And do we need to add any more? Yeah, let's go ahead and just add this. A new line, clean things up, and check it out. So this was the original list, 24, 10, 12, 8. Obviously not in order. And at the end, we get a nice sorted list. Small numbers at the top, big numbers at the bottom. Boom, check it out. And let me guys talk you through this code one last time. So up here, you know what's going on. We just created a random array of 10 elements, numbers 0 to 25. We printed it out right here. So this was the original list. Now, what this hunk of code does right here is the main meat of this tutorial. This variable just checks is the list sorted or not. So you, I probably should have called this sorted, but swapped works just as well. Now, the only time that it's going to be equal to zero is if it is in order already. If it's not and you swapped elements, then it's going to set it equal to one. Of course, do the loop again. Now, of course, we had a for loop in here, which was pretty much the brains behind everything that took every single number and compared it to the number after it. And it did that using this if statement right here and said, OK, if the first number is bigger, change them around. If not, leave it be. And if it got to the end of the entire list and it didn't swap any numbers, well, then that means that your list is in order and you're good to go. So once that happens, we just printed out the sorted list and boom. So I know that bubble sorts are kind of confusing at first. And like I said, there are a million different sorting techniques. Not um, like there isn't one that's the best, but this is probably the easiest one to understand, even though it seems kind of confusing at first. But if you don't quite get it, then just look at the code, break it down piece by piece. And after a couple minutes, you guys are going to understand exactly what's going on. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to, ugh, got a freaking whooping cough. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.